All right, let's have a quick discussion about the game of life. And don't get offended if I'm making a uh, comparison to this reality that we live in as being a, a, a computer game or just a big game. But just think of it as an uh, analogy, a mind experiment. Uh, or if you want, if, you, if you're keen to that idea, go just run with it all the way. But let's say we're living in a, a computer game right now. And it's called Game of Life. And let's say there's been some characters in the past who got some cheat codes or some extra downloadable content, some, some little extra experiments to see how their gameplay would be changed. And, and at the end of the day, we get to really discover from these type of players what makes this game fun to begin with. What, what makes this game uh, really worth playing and, and gives us the longest play time? Because, you know, game developers are always interested in how playable their games are and how long, you know, what kind of value you get from the game. Some games are just a quick one through and you don't want to do them again. In other games, you can just go back and replay it over and over and over in a lot of different ways. So in this game, there was a character. His name was, uh, well, his nickname, his friends called him Solo. And uh, he went into login. Solo was too short. Had to, uh, somebody had already taken it or something. So he went Solo Man. And he goes into the game and the game developer breaks protocol and says, look, I want to try something. I've got a lot of different perks here that I can give you. Um, that just Let's just run down the list. If you want to pick one, I'm just going to give it to you free of charge. No upgrade necessary. No, You don't have to pay a charge. Uh, we've got super strong. If you want like to be stronger than everybody around you, like nobody has ever met anybody as crazy strong as you, you, you can have that one. There's another perk here for... Um, hero like ultimate hero you can be any kind of hero you can be a, a dragon slayer if that if that's what you want you can you can whatever hero you want or you could be um cunning that's that's one it's like for the the thieves guild is the is is a good one where you can be like a master thief you can sneak like maximum sneak ability and and pickpocketing skills um you could be uh, lover boy, there's the, the you know you can have all the skills of charm and charisma, and be able to talk your way in, in, into any facility and out of any any you know you just wherever you want to go. There's that package. There's the Midas touch, which is like stupid money. Um, you know, just going down all the all the different game characters. You know, like crazy good archer it could be that one. He's going down this long list. I mean, it's a super huge list, and he comes across this one that was like. Um, like see it what was the name for it was like see it all or see see it as it really is uh know know how this how everything works like be able to put together what, what was the name for it let me think okay i think this thing was called super sage i mean it was right up there with all the the noble uh perks like the the super heal, healer that could heal everybody and uh the the, the 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 warrior the super leader the one that could lead troops and to battle this one was right up there but it was like super sage so you you would have this ability to uh, put things together in life and and explain it to other people and it was like super smart like you could you could see through all the 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 the, the puzzles it was like a puzzle master and you could unlock the puzzles you could see the puzzles and the reason the description on this one was interesting to solo was the ability to unlock other perks see that that was the the chief ultimate goal on this one once you max it out is you could unlock a lot of other side perks so he chose that one and the developer thought that was great because he, he said hardly anybody ever chooses this one so this is awesome to see somebody going this route and this will be an interesting gameplay for sure now he already started out in kind of easy mode. He had his his beginning stage was set pretty wealthy, um, lots of influence, lots of um, easy street type of things going his way. But with this perk, he was able to max it out. Literally, I mean, he came, he became like the the richest person in the world, the most influence, the most um, um, resources to just influence the world, not just for his lifetime, but for the rest of the game. I mean, it, crazy time. He would influence players forever and have the ability with this perk to change the game and and, and just be a, a crazy influence. So it started out with him taking this perk. And then he 
he figured out how to unlock like ultimate ultimate gold, ultimate money resources. He, that was easy. He was able to turn this reality into a crazy money making machine, and that's what he did. He it was just spitting out gold. He had so much money he could do anything. But anybody that's played that that game and enabled the cheat code for wealth, you you know it gets boring after a little while. So he did it for a while and then it got boring. So then he figured out how to unlock another package or another DLC. And this one was one of those builder packages. You know, you can you can take reality in sandbox mode and, and you can just build whatever you want. Just play all day long building things. And he did that. He, exa- he just threw himself into building, building, building. Did it for a long time. Had lots of playability. But then that got, you know, of course it got old. After a while, it always does. And he had to go find another another mod. So the next mod he came across, let me see if I got this right. I think it was um, the ultimate host. And he threw the best parties. He had, like, all these venues and mansions and he hosted like like mega rock stars of the day you know the celebrities that were the best of the best had them all at his parties best music best art best food best booze uh the the hippest people the celebrity trail everything i mean he had it all party after party after party but of course the parties get old and you have to spice them up so he <clears throat> he picked up a, an adult content uh, you know, adult only content mod, and this uh, kind of included some of the wild, you know, the wilder side, the sex, the drugs. Uh, really went down, you know, the uh, thousands of girls gone wild package. I mean, it was like the the most maxed out uh, porn package you could get, and he he did that, and of course that gets old, and he you know got tired of it. I mean, it lasted; it had some playability, but that got old too. So he's feeling a little distraught. He's, he's exhausted all of the pleasure points that this game of life has to offer. He finds one more, and it's the ultimate mysteries. So like the, the occult and hidden secrets, the best secrets that this game had to unlock. Like he was, It was like a dungeon dive package where he could go into these dungeons at the end of the dungeon he would get like some super gem of mystery some some hidden truth that nobody knows that would be the reward some relic that contains some super unique you know power in this in this world he'd have to slay monsters and demons and go do his dungeon dives and and that of course has its own type of gameplay and it was fun for a while but then even at the after a while that gets old it, it, what he what he discovered and what the game developer noticed is that everything got old, everything. And what made him want to be here and what makes this world playable and fun and enjoyable is not mastering all of those things. What he found is the challenge is good. The challenge of life is good, and that does make it fun. But it's so much better to just just play it in a much more humble level. And just and just play like, just play like a, a regular a regular player. Just this, the the game is much more fun if you don't enable all of the perks, if you don't enable the unlimited mods, if you don't have it all, if you just live simply and humbly and good. Because this game has an element of whether you you want to be a villain or if you want to be good. He said, be good, and and just be humble and enjoy it. And then just enjoy, enjoy the simple life. But the challenges of this life are kind of what makes it fun. And going into super cheats and all these mods that give you unlimited access to everything right off, just, just like that, it, it loses, it loses its, its allure. And uh, um, you, you may have figured out, I'm, I said solo man, but it's really Solomon, you know, from the Bible. And if you read Ecclesiastes, you'll read kind of his recap on what his life was and at the end of it what he what he says is truly important uh, Solomon I was thinking about another name was like Sol Sol O man where, where SOL stands for son so you could say son of man I was like now now I'm getting into like Jesus' life so I, I didn't want to I didn't want to go with son of man but solo man was a good username and uh, it sums up the kind of kind of life 
um, that Solomon did have. He, he went through all these experiences and discovered that none of it held meaning at the end of the day. Those were not the way to have a long-lasting play playthrough in this game. Now, this game, and I say game because I truly believe this reality is is kind of a fake reality. And, and the reason I've been wanting to do this little talk is because I keep having things around me uh, happen that are, are that are very game of life type, like impossible events. And I just had one happen to me yesterday, and uh, it I'll have to get in that in another video because I got to wrap this up. But it's it's one of these uh, occurrences where something around you it disappears and then come and then pops back into reality. It, it it's it's an impossible event. It's it goes right up there with other paranormal events, and it goes right up in there with other reality-shifting type observations. And I believe that a person who is opposed to believing that this is possible, that it's hard for them to see it. Like it might happen to them, but they don't see it. Like they can't accept it, so they reject it. But if you're open to this kind of thing, that, that reality is completely absurd now. I mean, if you look around, reality has just gone off the chain weird. And you can see how, how fake it is when you, when you see it clearly like that. And when you are open to the idea that things in this reality can completely change in the blink of an eye. And it's not, the physics engine is not as locked in as, as everybody has been programmed to think it is. Well, when you're open to it, then you start to see it more. And then the game itself has these built in, um, this AI that's, that's designed to keep its credibility. So it's always trying to autocorrect anything that might be considered um, outside of the physics engine. You're not supposed to recognize these things, but the game's always doing that. I've seen that for myself. These, these creatures that resist anybody from knowing the, the deeper truth of, of reality as it truly is. But just like a game is a microcosm of a bigger reality, I think our life is just a small fragment of a bigger reality that surrounds us. A much, str a, a huge reality. You call you can call that heaven, another dimension, whatever you want. We are surrounded by a reality that that dwarfs this one. This this one is nothing in comparison. And now that I see that, I see it when these little things <clears throat> they they happen and they they change. But maybe maybe later I can get into what happened the other day to me. All right. God bless.